Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Q&A session for CIM's upcoming short course, Introduction to Python and its Application Across the Mind Project Lifecycle, instructed by Sam Wright, who is here with us today. So thank you so much, Sam, for joining us. And also oh. big thank you to uh, Lifecycle Geo for sponsoring this event. Uh, my name is Victoria Burney. I'm the Professional Development Specialist at CIM. And on behalf of all of my colleagues, so thank you all for joining us here today. So the objective of today's session is really to review the course outline um, as well as the course objectives and provide some key takeaways as well. Uh, we will then have a Q&A period where you will have the chance to ask questions about the course. Uh, so just before we begin, I have a few housekeeping notes. Uh, so all of your microphones are muted by default. Uh, if you have any questions during the presentation, you can either raise your hand, with the virtual hand raise button, or you can type them into the Q&A panel. Uh, when the Q&A period begins, we'll go over any written questions first, and then we'll open the microphone to those who like to ask their questions verbally. So just virtually raise your hand in that case. All right, so without further ado, I'll turn the session over to Sam and we'll kick off the presentation. Thanks. Um, yeah, excited to be here, excited to tell you all about this course. So uh, just quick introduction on me. My name is Sam. Um, I'm the lead data scientist at Lifecycle Geo. Uh, I have my background, uh, educational background at least, is master's in data science and then also a master's in geology. So they're the two separate degrees. And so the work that I do um, uh, within kind of data science realm is uh, largely materials characterization. Um, I work with water, water quality, water, uh, forensic water quality, and then water management as well. Um, predictive modeling in both of those spaces. Uh, so a um, uh, huge part of my work is doing machine learning and building predictive models to solve problems. Uh, I also spend some time building analytical software for geochemical data processing. Um, and then I work with uh, integrating machine learning models into operational processes. So taking machine learning and uh, putting it somewhere that a client can actually um, access and, and do stuff with it. So, uh, yeah, you know, pretty, um, pretty solid background there. And so what we're um, teaching here in this course is really uh, the foundational skills to be able to do some of the work that I just described that I do on a daily basis. And so um, the course objectives here are really kind of as an overview, um, just getting a foot in the door with doing Python work. So you're going to learn about software management and code environments. Um, you're going to learn the building blocks of Python. Uh, you're going to learn about the free and open source tools that you have access to when developing in Python. Um, and then we're going to really kind of zone in on Python for data analytics or data analysis. And so some of the core skills associated with doing uh, data analysis in Python. Um, and then we're going to try to set you up so that you can be uh, successful when you go off and do your own coding. Um, so we'll teach you a whole bunch of problem solving skills, um, um, how to how to kind of be a self uh, by your bootstraps type thing. And then if we have time at the end, we're going to touch some machine learning concepts. So this is not a machine learning course. This is this is the, the foundational work that you need to do before you can move into a um, machine learning course. Um, but we are going to cover a lot of kind of the, the data analytics that come before any kind of hardcore machine learning. So uh, that's kind of the objectives um the way that the course will run so um uh pretty pretty much kind of just just that those objectives but now kind of in an outline format so whoever joins us will do introductions and icebreakers um we'll start by making sure that everyone's set up and ready to run python in either their local ecosystem or online uh, then we're going to kind of talk about the core concepts and the data structures that are essential for uh, developing and coding in Python. Uh, we're going to talk about environments and packages. So those are those free open source uh, um, service or, or um, 
uh, features that you have availability to. Uh, and then this data manipulation thing is kind of going to be the big uh, main course. And so that that's going to cover most of our uh, data analysis, uh, data, data wrangling in Python. So that's we're going to spend a bulk of time there. There's probably going to be some breakout sessions, um, mini project type thing. And then we're going to go and, and talk about debugging. So that's where you'll learn how to solve your own problems. And again, if we have time, I will give you an introduction to ML. Um, we shall see uh, how far we get. It would be really great if, if we could give you a taste of that. And then um, at some point, uh, you can follow up with that and, and get some more information. Um, uh, and then we'll just finish with the wrap up. Uh, so, you know, just just to kind of let you know, um, I'm now going to talk a little bit about some of the, the takeaways that you will get from this course. Um, a lot of the work that you will be doing is going to be kind of learning how to manage software ecosystems and how to code. And so there's not really like a tangible takeaway. There's a lot of, of takeaways as far as your knowledge base. But we are going to spend a lot of time with data processing and we are going to really focus on working with um, uh, in, in this course, we're actually working with a geochemical data set, but really kind of a lot of the, the concepts could be applied to other um, kind of natural resource type data sets. Um, so this this is an emulation of actually a materials. Um, so this is assay data, um, but we're going to learn to do things like you know, look at distribution of our elements. So here we have um, sulfur and then we're breaking it down by lithology. And so we're going to learn how to make some of these kind of what we in the industry call exploratory data analysis plots. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of these things that can be done through other software tools um, like Excel um, or proprietary tools. But the kind of beauty and the idea behind Python and other open source software is that uh, unlike something like Excel, you can make it really fast and make it really um, efficiently and really fine tune what you want. And then also it's free. Um, and then you can kind of take what you have here and build from it. So, you know, um, yeah, we're going to kind of get you making plots like this. Um, and then you can kind of take that and apply it to your own data. Um, here's the same plot, just a different form. Um, this is something that's called a violin plot, which is something you want to use, maybe it's something you don't want to use. Um, you know, and then here we have another series of box plots. We're looking at um, now a different target variable, but we're kind of doing that same splitting on the one side by lithology, on the other side by primary alteration. So this is kind of, um, yeah, teaching you some of the stuff that I do as part of my like early stages of a workflow and really is the core skills um, are the most used skills kind of on a daily basis for me. So, you know, that just maybe hopefully whip your appetite a little bit um, as far as kind of there will be things that you produce and you will go home with um, a whole laundry stack of, of Python scripts, which you can then kind of tweak to put your own data into and, and get your own insights out of um yeah so just kind of a few more so this is a, a bumblebee plot b plot uh a swarm plot sorry um so you know just there's a whole bunch of different things you can do with it um and we're gonna go through we're gonna go through some of them so um do i hand it back off now or you want me to go over this yeah no i can i can do that sam thank okay. you um we do have one question that came into the chat regarding this presentation. Yes, we'll upload it into the chat uh, shortly. So you all will have a copy of this. Um, and thank you very much, Sam, for providing that sneak peek into the course and giving us some details of what we can expect. Um, so just a quick reminder, the course will take place on Wednesday, November 13th from 12 to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and the pricing is $439 for CIM members. $269 for students and $539 for the general public. And these are in Canadian dollars. Um, and I just want to mention that we do have a special gift for you today. We have a 10% off discount code and that is CIM, all in capital letters. Um, and we also have a QR code and a link that we'll provide in the chat. 
as well. So um, in the chat, if you click that link, you'll be redirected to the registration site where the discount code will already be applied, or you can type in CIM in the discount code box. Um, and this code is valid until October the 31st. All right, so now we'll get into the Q&A session. So we'll take a look um, at the questions that have come in. Just give me one second here. Okay, so while um, you are preparing your questions for us, uh, maybe Sam, could you tell us a little bit about the software that will be used? Oh, Sam, I think you're on mute uh, right now. Yes, thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, so we're going to be using two main two. Primary things, one, Python, uh, which is uh, both the software and the coding language, um, it'll become more clear. And then the other thing is VS Code, which is um, uh, a, a editor interface that you can kind of think about it as like the Microsoft Word for coding in Python. Um, you know, it's an interface in order to allow you to write Python code. So those are the two pieces of software that we're using. They're both completely free, completely open source, no subscription, no email needed. Um, yeah. Perfect. OK, thank you. Uh, will the course be challenging? Yeah, so I think that's a great question. Um, probably the most challenging part will be installing and setting up Python on your system. And by when I say your system, I mean your own computer at home or at work, whichever you're uh, using um, probably going to be the biggest hurdle um, for some folks who aren't familiar, but there is a workaround, which is that these um, this software can be run uh, from a cloud environment, um, and I've got resources to do that either using Google or um, there's another uh, service out there that allows you to run Python scripts. So um, don't worry if it ends up being too difficult and you can't get through that portion, you can definitely still get a lot of takeaways from the class by using those uh, cloud-based resources. Great, okay, thank you. Uh, what if any students have technical issues during the course? Um, yeah, so that's what I'm there for and that's what the first probably like hour or so of the class will be is that intro and then setting up the system and whoever's registered, I will be sending out uh, ahead of time, probably about a week ahead of time, um, a walkthrough of how to do the setup yourself. And so hopefully by the time you join the class, you'll already have the system ready on your computer. And if not, you'll already know where it went wrong and the questions to ask. But um, really, it's one of those where if you just follow the instructions, you should be absolutely fine. Perfect. Okay, and what machine learning uh, are we going to be exposed to should you get to that part of the short course? Yeah, so if we do get to that portion, um, I will give an overview of the concepts behind machine learning, the intent, and then a couple examples of what is called unsupervised machine learning, which is where you have um, data that you, you want to try to figure out relationships in the data without having prior knowledge of what relationships might exist in that data. Um, so it'll be uh, a, a good little chunk of conceptual stuff and then actually some hands-on of, of that one type of ML. Perfect. Okay. Does anybody have any questions who are joining us here today? Um, either you can type it in the Q&A box uh, or you can raise your hand and we can unmute your mic. Let's see. Okay, yeah, we have a few that have come in. So Mike has asked, um, Sam, have you taught this or a similar course before? How much would mining engineers benefit from this compared to geologists? Uh, great question. I've taught um, so I, I've taught Python courses at the college level. Um, uh, as for this course, we taught one very similar at the CIM conference in Vancouver last year. Although it was more focused on machine learning, 
Uh, as far as who is going to benefit the most, really uh, anyone who thinks that they might have the opportunity to like either improve or optimize their workflow by using either coding or machine learning. And so if you're someone who does a lot of repetitive tasks um, that you that can kind of be put into a rule of space, like an algorithm type thing, then there's a chance you could optimize your routines using machine learning or using using Python and coding. Um, as far as the uh, ML, um, really depends on the type of work you're doing. Like, hopefully, you get a sense of whether or not it would be a, a, applicable. But um, I know that more and more it's becoming of interest to people in the industry um, for solving problems, and it kind of uh, can really take that those analytics to the next step. Like, if you're working with data that has uh, what we call multi-dimensional data, so lots and lots and lots of variables in your data set, then yeah, ML might be a really useful thing for you. Thank you, Sam. Uh, we have a question from Carolina. She asks, at what point in the course will we cover the MINE project lifecycle and its application? Um, yeah, so that'll be kind of like the overview. This is the, the context that we're working within. And actually, yeah, I, I probably should have called it out directly. So that'll be where we're doing the data analytics part. We'll probably where it's going to come up most when we're working with that um, uh, that that data the, the data sets that we've provided um, that are associated with with the mine lifecycle. Um, we're going to probably be focusing mostly the data I have is more aimed at closure work than it is at um, kind of other portions, but the techniques and concepts um, are are kind of would apply um, elsewhere if, if that tracks. Perfect. Um, we have a question from Drew. So what sort of course materials are provided for us to take away from the course? Yeah, so you will get um, a a selection of python scripts in the form of uh ipython notebooks which is just a file format um and those will have the full code to run through everything we do in the class the course um you'll also get any kind of the presentation materials that i give um and then you'll get the data sets that we have used to um kind of design either the walkthroughs or the uh kind of um self projects around so those would be the three components that you'd get thanks sam we have a question from collins um asking if there's a discount for students and yes so students um the regular price for the general public is 539 dollars for students it's 269 um, and we also have a special discount code of cim all in capital letters that you can apply as well uh, so that that's our discounts. Okay, uh, we'll just check the Q and A box if there's anything else that has come in. Um, yeah, does anybody else have any questions? Again, either in the Q and A box or you can virtually raise your hand. We have another about ten minutes, so uh, so we'd be happy to answer any further questions. Just give it a minute. OK, uh, so if you have any further questions, um, you can definitely uh, contact Sam, uh, who we will uh, have his contact information on the screen in a moment. Um, so if anything comes up after this presentation or um, yeah, if something was not covered, feel free to send Sam a message. Um, and I just want to thank Lifecycle Geo again for sponsoring. And we really do hope that you found this session helpful. Um, also, we have a little survey if you have a moment uh, to fill out. We'll paste that in the chat. We're just really curious. Uh, we just want to get a sense of your interest in the course. Uh, so if you could fill that out, that would be greatly appreciated. I'll put it in the chat right now. And my colleague Lucia, she has uploaded the presentation into the chat, so you can feel free to download that and refer to that at any time. 
Um, so we'll just give it one last shot at anybody who has a question. Otherwise, we'll we'll close the meeting for now. And all right, okay. So just want to thank everybody for attending here today. Uh, again, the short course. Oh, sorry, Chris, you're saying you need the email. So the email address. Uh, oh, sorry for the. The presentation, okay. We'll send uh, everybody the presentation in an email. So it seems with MS Teams chat, there's some technical difficulties. So if you're not able to download it, don't worry. We'll send um, an email to everybody with the presentation. Um, and again, thank you for joining us. And the short course is November the 13th. And we do hope to see you there. So thank you again. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.